Hi, I'm Shannon from houseimprovements.com. In today's video, I just want to show you how I would remove baseboard uh, without damaging the drywall. So we've got a typical setup here. Uh, we've got a painted baseboard, drywalled walls, and uh, a lot of times people will get carried away with taking off the baseboard and they'll end up putting holes through the walls. So I'm just going to show you a couple little tips here and tricks to do that to remove that baseboard without hopefully causing any damage. So uh, one of the main things you want to do to start with is uh, get rid of anything else that's going to be in the way. In this case we've got a cold air register there. We already had taken the screws out so we got that out of the way. And you can see we've got baseboards along this this end of the room that we want to re remove. So in the case of uh, the, the baseboard itself, a lot of times when it's a paint grade baseboard, this top edge is going to have a small bead of caulking in there and then it was painted. Or even if there isn't caulking, sometimes when people paint the baseboards or the walls over years, you get a buildup of, uh, of paint in this corner and they basically stick the two together. And if you just go ahead and try to pry that off, you usually end up damaging the drywall above it. And uh, that's no good if you're reusing the same kind of baseboard or the same height. Now you've got these damaged spots you're going to have to fix up uh, that you can't cover. So what I would normally do is just take a, a utility knife with a sharp blade and cut right in, down in this joint to cut either the paint that's got the two glued together or the caulking, whichever your case might be, or it could be both. So you would just want to kind of cut right around there all the way. In this case, we're reusing the baseboard at a later date, so we're trying not to damage the baseboard either. You can see I just kind of get the blade right down in there carefully and try to cut right through everything all the way around. I'm going to come around here. so. Okay, so we've done that to start with. So hopefully we don't get any uh, uh, tearing of the paper off the drywall. Now I've got a bit of a selection of different bars here. For the most part, usually this one bar that you see me use for almost everything uh, is the only bar I'm going to need, but uh, sometimes you're going to need something a little heavier. So to start with, uh, your baseboard you'll notice is still quite tight to the wall, so you need to kind of get this nice thin slim bar down in, in there, in that joint that we just cut between the trim and the drywall, just to kind of get things opened up. And just pry gently. This is kind of a bad spot to start because these corners are probably glued together as well. I'm just going to kind of gently pry there. And actually, I broke that one. So we'll get this corner started off. You can see that the, the joints here were actually glued together, which is pretty common. These small pieces, it's kind of hard to get started with. So all these chunks will come off. You're going to end up the odd spot where the nails might stay in the walls like that. So you, if they're just brad nails, it's pretty easy with a pair of pliers to get them started. And pulling off, pulling out like that. You can see how long that was. This is where the drywall face was. So you just want to start with them. You can see here we've got a plastic corner bead that's hidden up behind here. It's not really covered down here, so it's pretty susceptible to damage and you could crack this up here. So you want to just kind of put a piece of uh, thin wood or something there to sort of pry against so that you don't you hopefully don't crack up these corners. Okay, so get those nails out as you go or you'll kind of forget about them. So then we've got this little guy and this one will just be likely glued. I might have to we may have to recut these corners because they're not coming off too good. Oh, maybe this one's going to come now. Nope. So you can see again, we left nails behind. I'm just getting a hold of the end of it with my pliers and then 
twisting as I go up against this plywood. Okay. Okay, so we finally got to the piece we wanted to get to. So I'm going to deal with it as if I, I couldn't get in access at this end. Maybe we're working in a corner or whatever. So same thing. I just want to push that bar down in behind there. Uh, but you don't want to skid in too, too quickly uh, above this, uh, uh, the top of the baseboard or you're going to damage that, that uh, drywall surface. And there might be a nail right here in the very end. So I'm just prying against the baseboard and against the drywall that's hidden in behind, hidden in behind the baseboard. And I'll show you here in a minute the little scuff mark you leave, but it's below the, the baseboard mark. Now another way to do that is once you get it kind of loosened off a bit, you can use your scrap again and the other end of the bar and you're prying against the scrap so that your bar doesn't actually punch a hole through that drywall. Once you get it started, you can usually pull it off by hand and this is generally what you're left with. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times, most of the nails are going to pull out, off with the baseboard. So you're left with this porcupine of a piece of baseboard. And I like to get rid of those right away instead of just throwing them in a pile and then they're scratching everything and you're, you're poking your fingers with them or whatever. So I'll pull all those nails out right away as I go. So I'm just simply grasping them with the pliers, twisting the pliers and pulling them out through the back, not out through the front. We'll get them all out of the way. Okay. So then also as I go, I want to have some kind of labeling system. So when, if I'm putting these same baseboards back on, I know where each piece came from. So, I mean, you can put the, the room, if you're doing multiple rooms, you might want to put, you know, bedroom, uh, and then start a numbering or a lettering system. So you know where they go. So you want to mark the, the piece that you took off. In this case, I'm putting number one and you want to mark on the wall below like where it's going to cover with the corresponding number. So when you're sorting through this big stack of baseboards that you wanted to reuse, it's a little bit easier to sort out what went where and where it came from. And if you do it as you take them off, you don't forget to do it. So, okay, so we've got that piece off. We've got one nail over here that's uh, still sticking out that didn't come off of the baseboard. So just like around the corner there, we're just going to get a hold of it and pull it out. That one was just in the drywall, so it came out easy. Okay, so uh, that's kind of one thing. Now, I mean, I, I can show you taking all these off, but it's really the same process. You just want to pry and keep moving your way along. What I'd like to do with this one piece is just show you everything that I did. So I pulled it off. I've labeled it. I pulled the nails out, but now I'm still left with these little tearaway spots on the back where the old nails came out. And it's nice to kind of deal with those at the same time right now too, so that this is all cleaned up. So I just take a little rasp and I just, doesn't take much, just kind of knock off those, those high points so they're flat again. That way when you go to put this back on the wall, it sits nice and tight back against the wall and you don't have those little bumps on the back kind of holding you away. Another thing that you might find, uh, these ones aren't bad at all, but if, if this was caulked on with quite a big goopy bead of caulking, there might be some on here that you might want to take off. So a bar like this is pretty good because you can just kind of carefully scrape along there. I don't know if you can see that. There is a little bit on this one. And as I kind of pull off, it just kind of peels that little bit off. Now in this case, these ones weren't bad, so it's not a big deal, but sometimes that's a big amount. Your knife even will work. You can kind of do the same thing with the knife carefully. Um, so that's, that's your piece of trim. Now on the wall, you might have a little ridge like we have here, and that's that caulking, or it could be paint as well. And same thing, I just want to tear, carefully take my knife, or my uh, bar, I mean, and just kind of pry that off scrape that off so I don't have that ugly ridge right there. Here's the couple spots where there was some damage from my bar. But that's below the line that uh, the baseboard was at. So it's just kind of work that along right now. Then that way it's all ready to go when you uh, when you're ready to put your baseboards back on. 
So that kind of showed you everything. Uh, so the basic stuff you're going to need is what I had here. And uh, if you're going to use this bigger bar, the reason I grabbed it is sometimes what you need to do is you do all your cutting and everything. And maybe you can't get this a thin bar like this. Maybe you can't even get it in there because it's so tight. Sometimes what you can do is just take a bigger bar like this and go underneath, get it under the baseboard and you can kind of pry up and get this loose. I don't know if you noticed how before this was tight. Now by doing that, I've created a bit of extra room there and now I can get my bar in there easier. Okay, so that's what the bigger bar is for. You don't always need it. Usually the small bar is all you need. But uh, just have a, a few little blocks of scrap with you to put against the wall to protect things and uh, you should be good to go. So that's uh, just some little tips and tricks for removing your baseboard without creating a whole bunch of extra work by damaging your drywall. So uh, hopefully you liked that video and if you did we'd appreciate if you click the thumbs up down below. You can also subscribe to our channel if you haven't done that before and uh, by clicking the subscribe button obviously down there. If you want to get notifications after that click the little bell that shows up. And other than that I'm glad that you came here to watch House Improvements and hope to see you next time.